Chase Hall with Blake Shear. And uh, today, in this episode of Cedar Springs TV Live, we're going to first talk about the su student highlight here at Cedar Springs High School. So I've gone on seven mission trips. Um, when I was younger, I went on two that were like in, just in Grand Rapids, and they were a week long. And then I went to four that were in like the Midwest area, so like Wisconsin, Minnesota, Ohio. And then I went to Honduras two summers ago for seven days. Um, I think that I've been to about seven mission trips. Um, in middle school, we went to a couple in the area. And then after that, we went to some out of state and even out of the country. So for most of them, it's more like painting inside or painting outside or just like doing yard work, planting plants cleaning, um, skirting like trailers, but in Honduras we actually built like a cafeteria or like a food station next to the school that was there. And we also just in Honduras hung out with the kids, played soccer, played Duck Duck Goose. Um, in a lot of them, the out-of-state mission trips and all of them, we did this community service work. So we helped some elderly families whose houses need rest needed restoration and just basically basic community service help. Um, I would say that my biggest takeaway is just that helping people is really important and it can make an impact on their lives and your own life. The one that impacted me the most is probably going to Honduras because obviously that was a really good experience. You got to see a different culture and it was really good and educational, I think. I'd say the biggest difference between Honduras and America is that in America, lots of people are like very materialized and like they focus on like what they have and what they don't have and what they need and want where in Honduras they really don't have a lot other than each other and they're just as happy as we are in America. When I went out of the country and saw a different culture it showed that not everything is materialistic and other people can be happy from the little things. So. Well Blake, those students really deserve that highlight and it's just great to see what they've done. Yeah, it's awesome to see students from Cedar Springs making a difference outside of America and other countries around the world. Our next piece today is about a piece of the community that's very important. It's about the North Kent Community Enrichment, and so we're sending it to me with a piece about what's going on there. For over 30 years, the Cedar Springs Area Parks and Recreation, or what has been known as the North Kent Community Enrichment since 2019, has been funding and organizing a variety of events and activities for the Cedar Springs community. Such events include the Daddy-Daughter Dance, various youth sporting camps, Zumba classes, Taekwondo, Open Pickleball, and much more. That being said, the North Kent Community Enrichment, or NKCE, has experienced financial hardship recently, especially since the outbreak of the coronavirus. There's uncertainty on whether or not the NKCE will continue to operate. During their next monthly meeting on March 7th, the NKCE board members will be voting on whether or not to dissolve the program. There are a number of different factors that the board members will need to consider before finalizing their decisions. On one hand, the NKCE makes community events more affordable and accessible to families of the Cedar Springs community. Sue Wolf, former board member of the NKCE, expresses this concern as she claims there are just so many people that depend on this for camps and clinics and special activities. There are just a lot of reasons that it serves a very significant service for our community, adults and children. On the other hand, it has become increasingly harder for the NKCE to remain financially afloat. Not only did the coronavirus outbreak throw a wrench in their operations by shutting down facilities and preventing in-person events, one of their biggest supporters and sponsors over the past 30 years, the Nelson Township decided to stop funding the NKCE last year. Supervisor of the Nelson Township, Robin Britton, explains this decision by stating, We didn't see the program continuing to go on. There wasn't a clear direction. 
Britain also reports that they gave the NKCE a 90-day notice on their decision and that no members of the NKCE reached out to them to try and change their mind. The NKCE will continue to function through June of 2022, but the board's votes on March 7th will determine the longer-term future on if the NKCE will continue to operate or not. I'm Blake Shear with Cedar Springs TV, signing off. Something that important to our community is going on out of business. Yeah, I definitely personally remember doing those type of sporting events and camps as a child, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see until March 7th to see if they'll continue to operate. Next up, we're sending it to Aubrey French with this week's update on sports. Thanks, Blake. Hello, I'm Aubrey French with Cedar Springs TV, and today we'll be focusing on the wrap-up of winter sports. Last Saturday, the varsity competitive cheer team made it to regionals and got second place, leading them into states this weekend. Along with that, the bowling team also won their regionals and is going to states this weekend as well. I'll be sending it off to Drew, to Drew Matson to continue the winter sports wrap-up. On this episode of Cedar Springs TV Live, we're going to be covering the winter sports season of 2022. The boys varsity basketball team has made much improvement from their previous season coming off a 2-18 record. They hope to be the first Cedar team to win a Class A district game. The varsity girls season came to an end on Monday with a tough loss to Greenville for the first round of districts. The cheer team is having an outstanding season. They had just recently placed second at regionals just a few points behind DeWitt. They will be competing at states located at the Deltaplex on this upcoming Saturday, March 5th. The wrestling season has come to an end for all but one, Carter Fallon. He is the only wrestler from Cedar competing at states this year. Our bowling program has had some recent success with wins at regionals. Members of the team will be moving on to compete at states like most of our other sports this season. Thank you for tuning in on this episode of Cedar Springs TV Live, and enjoy your week. Thanks, Drew. Congratulations and good luck to our state qualifiers. With winter sports coming to an end means that spring sports are about to begin. We're going to send it off to Gabe Minnick to further elaborate. Thanks, Gabe. I'm really looking forward to the spring sports season. Furthermore, Cedar has newly implemented our Hall of Fame to recognize accomplishments of former athletes, coaches, and more. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can visit our Cedar Springs TV YouTube page. Also, we would like to acknowledge the well-deserved college commits Cameron Heiss and Alyssa Detweiler. On that note, I'll send it off to Cole Detloff to further explain. Hello, I'm Cole Detloff from Cedar Springs TV. In this past month, we have had multiple athletic college signings. These students have combined a balance of school and sports in order to continue their education and athletic career at some solid colleges. Let's take a look at our recent commits and what they achieved to get to this point. To start off, we have Alyssa Detweiler. She's a senior volleyball player and track and field high jumper. Recently, she committed to Aquinas College to continue her athletic and educational career. Alyssa has started playing volleyball since 6th grade and running track since 7th. 
Alyssa is not only an excellent athlete, she has completed 11 AP courses within her four years of high school and would like to focus a career on biochemistry and molecular biology research. She is very excited about continuing playing sports in college because she loves the competition and relationships along the way. Next up we have Kyle Jarosh, a senior basketball player who recently committed to Siena Heights University within Adrian, Michigan over an athletic scholarship. Kyle has played since he was four years old and has spent many hours working for what he wanted to achieve. Playing basketball throughout his life influenced his whole schedule and leisure time. Taking basketball to the next level within college made him realize the importance of taking school seriously. He hopes to find a proper education at Siena Heights as well as being really excited about continuing his athletic career. Lastly, we have Cameron Heiss, a senior football athlete who recently committed to Fair State University. Cam Heiss started playing football in Washington at the age of 12, however moved to Cedar Springs in 7th grade and continued to play since. Football has always been a big lesson for Cam, teaching him how to stay humble in tough situations and stay disciplined. Cam learned through this process that getting good grades in high school is extremely important in continuing your athletic career in college. By playing football with such a high health program, he knows he has to compete with tons of other talented players. As he is a little nervous, he is willing to put in the hours and commitment to be the best. These students have shown the ideal hard work and dedication to continuing their athletic and educational careers outside of the high school. Congratulations to these students and hopes for a good future. This is Cole Detlaw from Cedar Springs TV, signing off. Thanks Cole. On the topic of athletic achievements, we're going to send it over to Aiden Brunin to further follow up on our Hall of Fame. night went really good. Um, a lot of people showed up for the game and also for the ceremony. We had a ceremony in the cafeteria and everybody was super grateful so it just felt really good. My guidelines for the Hall of Fame, well there were a lot so we had to come up with a committee like uh, people to vote on the nominees and we had the sign to build. Um, like just all of the rules, the most deserving team or person in the Hall of Fame would be the wrestling team because they won a state championship or Ted Sabinas because he coached forever and had a lot of good runners. Well, setting up the Hall of Fame was a lot of work. I started it my freshman year before COVID and everything. Um, and then we kind of finished it this year. I'd probably spend three hours a week on it for 20 weeks, so a lot of time, like a lot. Thank you, Aiden, and congratulations to these inductees, and thank you to our student council for putting this all together. That's all I have today. Once again, I'm Aubrey French, sending it back to Chase. Thank you, Aubrey. Super interesting piece there. Chase, I think it's awesome to see former athletes from Cedar Springs getting some recognition. Yeah, I mean, what they did for this school is well-deserved, and it's a great way to put their names out there. And now we'll send it to Reed Brandemore, who has uh, more on the Cedar Springs Post.
Well, Blake, it's a shame that the Cedar Springs Post might be going out, and it's just a real shame. Yeah, it is a shame. The Post does a lot for the community, spreading information and getting the word out, so it's definitely a bummer to see that story in progress. But on other notes, uh, our next piece is about the Olympics. The 2022 Winter Olympics recently happened, and we're going to be sending it to Hayden Morris with more information on that story. I'm Hayden Morris from CSTV, and today I will be covering the Olympics, and I interviewed one of my fellow classmates, Eli Malone, about his experience with the Olympics this year, and we will be following Sean White's final run in his Olympic career. Really only curling, if I'm going to be honest. Skiing and snowboarding don't really interest me, and I really don't like hockey at all. It's kind of boring to me. It's just skating around. You can't even see the puck. I would prefer summer over winter Olympics by a wide margin just because the events are a lot better. I enjoy watching like the basketball and the track a lot more than hockey. Probably John Schuster of the USA men's curling team. Uh, I just enjoy curling a lot. So he's their captain. So he's their most of the time their best player. He had a really good shot against uh, Sweden. And I was like, that just, he's insane. So he's probably my favorite. Curling intrigues me the most just because it's kind of like chess. It's like really methodical. So it's just really interesting to watch. Obviously chess isn't interesting to watch, but just um, throwing the stones and doing the blocks and everything, it's interesting to see how they play it out and just how much they have like 40 minutes for each match of like planning, which just shows how, how precise you have to be to be the closest to the center of the circle. So it's interesting to see that. That's all we have for the Olympics today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Signing off, Hayden Morris from Cedar Springs TV. Thank you, Hayden. It's always awesome to see all the countries of the world come together and compete in the Olympics. Chase, do you like the Winter or Summer Olympics more? Well, honestly, I prefer the, the Winter Olympics because um, there's just it seems more interesting to me because there's actually some sports there that I like enjoy watching and stuff. And uh, for the final piece of this live stream, we're going to send you to Eli Malone with some COVID updates here at Cedar Springs High School. Recently, the Kent County Health Department lifted the COVID-19 public health order for all schools in Kent County that was effective February 18th of 2022. This change means for Cedar Springs Public Schools, no isolation is required for student or staff member who tests positive for COVID-19. There is no quarantining required for a student or staff member who is exposed to COVID-19. However, students or staff members who display symptoms should still stay home. And there is still a federal mandate for March 18th for kids to wear masks while on the bus still. We asked a student at Sears Springs High School what he thinks about these new changes and reflecting on COVID-19 as it may come to an end. I think it's a step. Uh, towards getting back to the normal life, but obviously COVID is still a thing. Um, it's not like it's gone, and it obviously still is mutating as we just saw recently, so things can still happen, but uh, I'm not sure if it's too early yet. I really can't decide, but it's a step towards normal. I think obviously they're gonna keep loosening up unless it gets worse, and I know people are very against it going back to what it was. Um, Obviously, when we tried to go back into a lockdown, there was huge controversy. So I don't think that's ever going to happen again. And it's really just going to stay probably stagnant or just like an all time thing like the flu, just like you got to be aware of it. Hopefully this trend of mandates loosening continues as less COVID-19 cases seem to be appearing. This is Eli Malone from Cedar Springs TV signing off. Thanks, Eli. And that's all we have on this episode of Cedar Springs TV Live. I'm Chase Hall. And I'm Blake Shear. And remember, it's, it's a, a great, great day, day to be a Red Hawk. Hawk.